Tom Higdon and Mrs Higdon were both very, very opinionated in a nice way. They were very kind in general, though Tom could be bombastic. But they were very, very generous as well. And if you like, if, if you've got time, I could give you one example of that. Mrs Higdon finding children had come to school with wet feet because their shoes were leaking, bought boots for, their chil for the children out of her own money. It was much broader than the usual type of um, education that was going on in primary schools in the country in that time. Uh, it involved languages, it involved that she wanted to teach typing. She teaches photography and after school the children were also welcome to come back after dark and she would teach them about the constellations. So way, way ahead of her time. The Reverend Charles Eland, who um, was new to Burston, wanted to... Um, reinstate the church as the leader of the community and therefore put his power over onto the Higdons. Um, when the parish councils were introduced in 1894, um, a lot of the power went away from the church and Tom Higdon, who was a strong unionist and keen on uh, local people joining the parish council, therefore put, was going to put his point of view forward. And from that point onwards, he began a campaign, almost a vendetta, against Mrs Higdon because he couldn't actually do anything against Tom Higdon. Tom Higdon hadn't done anything wrong, and Tom Higdon was the undermaster. Mrs. Higdon was the headmistress. So if he could get rid of Mrs. Higdon, he could get rid of her husband as well. So there was this vendetta against the Higdons. Um, Annie Higdon also complained about the conditions in the school, which weren't very good, and by complaining, she put herself in conflict with the managers. Annie Higdon believes strongly in, in every child having, having a fair crack at education and she believed that they ought to be being treated properly in a school. And they were deeply religious people but very highly princi principled. They were Christian socialists and they wanted to put this ethos across. There was a lighting problem at the school and there was a heating problem at the school so she fought very hard with the managers and as a result of that she was, became extremely unpopular with them and that coupled with her husband's um, work with the agricultural union and what that was doing, um, it, just, it, was, it was always going to be a, a collision course at some point or other. And in fact, the main complaint was that the Higdons were discourteous to the governors. Um, there were some trumped up charges um, which were uh, that she had smacked a Bernardo's child. Uh, these were later proved, I believe, uh, to be incorrect. Um, and, um, and so it was mainly on this charge. It was very much Reverend Eland was totally shocked when suddenly he lost support on the parish council, lost his seat. Tom Higdon and some of the normal farm workers were elected in his place and uh, the council was just completely taken over. Um, well, the children organised themselves. Uh, Violet Potter had obviously talked to um, one or two of her classmates and they decided they'd go on strike. The parents had become aware and decided that they would back the children and there was a meeting on the village green, a lantern lit meeting apparently. Uh, George Durbridge um, chaired it. So they wrote on the blackboard to say that they were going on strike. They'd already discussed it the, the night before with their, with their parents and they organised the next morning that they would all turn out with their placards to walk around the village and telling everybody that they were, they were going to support the teachers. And so it actually began the very next day, April the 1st, 1914. And the Reverend Eland, hearing the noise of the children, Violet with her accordion and another lad with another instrument, I think, and the children singing as they lined up to walk the candlestick. Reverend Eland thought it was some sort of April Fool's joke, um, you know, a nine-day wonder. But it went on for 25 years, so there must have been a huge amount of solidarity within the village. <laughs> <laughs>